You guys are probably here because you need some help with pier fishing. Well, today I want to help explain to you guys some of the things that I always bring to the pier um, and that I, I always have success on. And I want to explain to you guys how I use it and when I use it. So stay tuned to here. So I've been fishing in many, many piers throughout the, the United States and all of them have one thing in common. There are predator fish that will hit a moving bait. Um, and some of the baits that I really like to use, uh, they don't always work. So I bring multiple different kinds of lures and different kinds of rigs to try until I find them. So the first rig I'd like to talk about is spoons. They come in all different shapes and sizes. This one is actually a cheap one from China that will light up when you throw it into the water. As soon as it goes to the water, it'll start flashing lights. And this works really well at nighttime um, because it'll attract a fish, it'll see the flash, and um, you know that could look like a bait fish shimmering in the moonlight or just something interesting for a fish to catch its, to catch its attention. Now when I'm throwing spoons, I throw it far to try and cover a lot of distance. And I usually throw a spoon when I first get to a pier just to see what kind of activity is going on around the pier. Spoons work all around the world because it mimics a little bait fish swimming in the water. A spoon will give itself natural action. All you got to do is reel it in. And it's a very simple, simple way to start catching fish on lures. If you've never caught fish on a lure before, which I totally understand, it's kind of difficult to start getting into lure fishing, especially if you were a bait fisherman most of your life. But you got to remember, these work. These work. Many, many, many people catch fish on, on spoons. And if you're not catching something on a spoon, it's because you're not doing something correctly. All right, next I want to talk to you guys about a rig that I would call it a mixture of both lure and bait fishing. And that's the flounder rig. I put a swim bait at the end of this, but you can put literally whatever you want at the end of this hook. Uh, but the basic idea is that it has this, you see this little shimmery thing right here above the hook? That thing will spin in the water. So fish will see something flashing in the water and you can put a piece of, of bait on here. I usually put a piece of salty tentacle right here, the super salty squid. I take a bit of this tentacle off and I put it right on here. That way it's got natural scent and it's got natural flow to it. Um, so something like this doesn't have the scent but it has a nice flow. I would also use this if I didn't have salty squid on me. This is a little lake fork swim bait. I think it's like a little two and a half, three incher. This rig works for so many different species. This is just a small hook. You could put a bigger hook and do the same thing. I've caught perch, spot, croaker, uh, rockfish, um, bluegill, all sorts of things. Anything that will hit a little swimming fish will hit this. It's a really good multi-species rig if you want to go out and catch a bunch of fish. When you first buy this rig, you can find it at Bass Pro, Walmart. Um, it just comes like this and there's a little loop up top right here. And sometimes people get confused how to tie these on. Um, I'm going to show you the easiest way I learned. My friend Edmund taught me how to use this rig not too long ago. Um, and I've, I haven't stopped using it since because it, it just works so well. I get a swivel clip. It can spin around freely. It's got a ball bearing right here. And this clip will clip on to here. Okay? And then this, this end goes to the main line of your, fishing rig, of your fishing reel. This is your main line end. Before you tie the main line, you want to put a sinker and I usually use a sliding sinker or a bullet sinker and it sits on it like that. When you swim it through the water, this part will sink and this part will flutter through the water. Just like that. And there's many ways you can retrieve that as well. You can do a slow retrieve on the bottom and that will catch a lot of flounder. You can do a, a mid-column swim and you'll catch some perch. There's a lot of different possibilities to, with this rig. They come in a package like this with usually five to six hooks. Uh, these are size four, good for small inshore fish, little pan fish. I'm going to be using this in Southern Maryland. Okay, next thing that I use constantly while at the pier is these DOA swim baits. It's pretty much the same thing as this. You guys remember this? Except this is much larger. This is a three and a half incher. 
and I get I usually go for a one fourth ounce jig head again it all depends on where you're fishing it if it's really deep water and fast moving water one fourth might not be enough maybe you'll go with a half ounce but the general idea with these is that you want it as light as you can get it and it still hit the bottom. Now it's time to put the swim bait onto here. I, I've noticed a lot of people have confusion about uh, getting this jig head onto the actual swim bait as well. Um, it's very simple. First thing you do, measure out where you want the hook to come out. You see it comes out right here. M mark that down, mentally mark it down or physically mark it down. And then you're gonna put this hook through the front of the nose right here, just like this, and push it straight back to where you marked it, okay? And then you're gonna pull it out, just like that, and push it onto the swim bait, and that's it, okay? Now you're gonna fish this the same way I've always taught you how to fish these little swim jigs. There are many, many ways. You're gonna to have to experiment different ways of retrieving it. Um, but I find a lot of times that I like to cast it out, let it sink to the bottom, and then slowly retrieve it first. Just to hit the bottom column first, because I, I feel like a lot of times the fish are on the bottom column. Those, the, those are three really great lures to use while you're, at, if you're first trying to catch fish at the pier, um, and, you're, and you're really trying to actually get on some fish, these have given me a lot of success while on the pier. I'm confident that all of these rigs will work pretty much any pier, if there's fish. Now, for you bait fishermen out there, uh, people who don't want to use lures, people who want to use bait instead, there's a lot of different options with that too. I find a lot of times when I use bait, I have more confidence in catching fish. I find more success using live bait. Something about it being alive and the natural scent of it out there and it actually be moving around out there where I don't have to, I don't have to make the action like I do with like the swim baits. I have to make the action and in the, at the end of the day, it's not a real bait. It's not, it's not loaded with scent. It's not, it's not actually moving. So I don't think that it can really beat a live bait. So when I'm using bait, I use a couple of different rigs. And again, it all depends on the structure of the pier. If you're fishing rocky bottom, you don't really want to use a, a high-low rig because that, that sinker is going to get stuck on the rocks down there. So usually what I bring to the pier is a box similar to this. This is just the box from the, the Pier Fishing Adventure Kit, which is available in the Um this comes with pretty much everything I'm talking about now, plus way more. It's just a guide to teach you the rigs to tie, all, all sorts of that stuff. But anyways, I bring a box similar to this every time I go pier fishing, where I set up everything I need to tie my rigs, and to re-tie my rigs on the pier if needed. And the rig I'm talking about today is um, the same one on, on the guide, which is either a knocker rig or a Carolina rig. And this rig is basically, here it goes, ready? Hook, leader line, okay? And then from the leader line, you tie a swivel. And this swivel will keep this from tangling your line when it spins around in the water because this, there's a ball bearing in the middle of this. This will keep from line twists and your line getting tangled. So now after I tie this on, I'll put a egg sinker on or a sliding sinker. And the weight of the sinker all depends on the structure I'm fishing again. If it's really fast moving water, something like a quarter ounce might be way too light. The next rig I wanna talk about is the high-low rig, which is a all-time classic rig. I'll show you right here. You guys have seen this rig before, right? It's the high-low rig. Two hooks on here, doubles your chances for fish, keeps it off the ground so crabs won't get your, your bait as easily. Um, the high-low rig is something that I use pretty much everywhere. I don't just use it for pier fishing, I use it for beach fishing. And you can put any kind of bait on there that you want. The key with using the high-low rig is to make sure that you're not fishing a really rocky area because that'll get stuck really quick. If you want to learn how to tie these rigs, we've got the entire tutorial on here. We've got a guide on how to tie these knots, 
uh, and when to tie these knots, on what lures, on what rigs, because you tie different knots on different rigs and different lures. Um, so we've got a guide on, online on centroskipper.com teaching you guys uh, what knots to tie and when. We've also got a pure fishing guide um, available for instant download at centroskipper.com where we'll teach you how to tie these different rigs. Um, okay, let's run through it one more time. Spoons, they work really well. Pretty much every pier. Try changing up the size of the spoon. Try changing up the retrieval speed of the spoons. Okay, next. This flounder rig, I'm not sure if it's even called a flounder rig. I call it a flounder rig because it catches so many flounder. Use this with a bullet weight and a snap swivel. Play with different retrieves. Same advice for all of them. Play with different retrieves. The fish will tell you what kind of retrieve it wants because it'll be hitting your bait. And then, DOA swim baits. These swim baits work all over the world. All over the world. Anything that wants to eat a moving fish will eat it. The high-low rig and a Carolina rig or a knocker rig. That's all my advice for today. I hope you guys like this little segment. Um, it always helps me to teach you guys because it's a nice little refresher before I go back fishing. And um, I thank you guys for watching. If you want have any more questions about pier fishing, about any kind of fishing, we do all sorts of different kinds of tutorials on uh, SenkoSkipper.com. So if you need more help, check that out. But for now, sayonara.